Hi everyone, I decided to start a new project from Country Charm book by Teresa Goodrich. I think that I selected this page because I really like a lemon tree. At least I think that it's lemon tree, but I am not sure because for me it's also spring time. We have daffodils here and I am not sure that it's botanically possible to have in the same time blooming daffodils and um, together lemons. Anyway, I still like this page and I decided to color it in my favorite way. First to do watercolor underpaint and then to work on details and contrast with colored pencils. I think that I will be using mix of pencil brands because over watercolor underpaint I prefer to work with on top of it with harder brands like Polychromosis or um, Kochener Polycolor and for details like flowers or tree I think that I will be using Prisma colors. I also like how they behave on this paper. You may see that I put protective sheet of paper under the page which I color. Usually I try to use very moderate amount of water, so I don't have problems with bleeding through, but still I preferred to protect the rest of the pages, because in this book I want to color everything from first to last pages. Apart from the question which season is this, I also found a couple of problem areas here. First one is that we have hills on the background, which started on the right side of the picture, but we can't see them on the left behind the tree. So I draw a line of those hills by myself. And also garden path starts from the gates, but um, it finishes nowhere, somewhere behind the uh, watering can. At least for me it was difficult to decide where exactly it's finished. Anyway, I started from coloring hills which are on the background. For this I selected one of the natural or slightly warm green colors from my watercolor set and I wanted to have slightly muted green, not as bright as I plan to use for the grass on the forefront. So I drop a little bit of brown into green, so my green for the hills isn't that bright and it's even a little bit opaque. For the grass, which I will be doing um, on the forefront, I will be adding a little bit of yellow into green. Or if you have colors like May green or grass green, everything which reminds you about fresh spring grass, you can use any watercolors for everything on the forefront. I think that to use watercolor underpaint is it's much easier and definitely much quicker way to do this page. It's already quite detailed and I definitely don't want to spend my time by filling in all spaces between leaves, so I decided to cover it with watercolors. When I apply watercolors, I don't bother about accidentally going over leaves or over tree trunk. I know that later I will be able to cover these areas with my colored pencils.
After I applied first layer of watercolors and I did completed my background, I let watercolor paint and paper to dry completely. You know that after drying usually watercolor paints become much lighter. But here I was quite satisfied with intensity of my colors. I decided that if I want more brightness, more contrasts, everything I will do with colored pencils. I only decided to add second layer of dark green colors for the hills which are far from us. But remember that in order to apply second layer of watercolor paint on this paper which is far from thick, you need to let first layer and paper to dry completely, otherwise you risk to ruin your paper. So be patient. When I applied second layer and when I was satisfied finally with all my colors, again I let paper to dry and I went and I ironed it. You know that I don't like to work with pencils on the wrinkled paper so I always dried. Uh, I always iron it but all, all, only when paper is dried completely. First I decided to color tree trunk and when I selected colors for the bark I decided to go from burnt ochre to chocolate and if I need for darker colors I can use uh, dark amber or one of polychromous colors. But when I started to color, I completely forget that on this page we have sunlight, we have source of light indicated by the sun which we have in the sky. When I did my watercolor background, I noticed that sun, but then I waited, I went to iron it page I got distracted, you know how it is when during self-isolation we have family around, so I completely forgot that the light source is in the right upper corner and I started to do the whole coloring as if the light source is on the left. Later when I noticed this I had to cover to mask sun in the sky and to convert it in some kind of cloud. I am sorry, but again I was distracted and I completely forgot it. Anyway, when I color bark of the tree, first I apply lightest color to show more highlighted areas on the tree trunk and then on the areas where branches are connected or where leaves are casting shadow on the tree trunk there I put darker colors like chocolate and I also love to add shading using polychromous dark sepia so today you will be seeing this pencil very often.
I switched from Prisma colors to harder pencils and with thin tip of polychromous duck sepia I add some texture to the tree bark and also I will indicate shadows on the grass. And that was the moment where I put all the shadows in the wrong directions. You know that shadows have to go in the direction opposite to the source of light and I put them all to the right. I know that later when I will be working on grass with various shades of green pencils I can forget about putting shadows on the grass. So that's why I decided to indicate them immediately from the beginning. I use very light pressure and from each of, of the objects like tree, like uh, boots, like mm, small flowers, like garden tools, from everything I put shadows which are going to the right. I also tried to darken a little bit grass beneath all the elements which are laying on the grass. For now it's more than a reminder for me than a finished look of the shadow, but as I said it's helpful because later it's completely possible for me to forget about shading. If you don't have polychromous dark sepia, you can easily switch it to Prisma color 70% French grey or 90% but with a light pressure. French grey colors is almost a perfect match to this dark sepia. But as polychromos is harder, it works better on top of the watercolor underpaint and as I said, I simply like to use this pencil for shading. It can be used with various colors for shading on brown, for shading on green. So even if you don't have set of polychromoses, I would recommend to purchase at least dark indigo and dark sepia. I think that they are very helpful. Before I started to color leaves, I realized that I am not totally happy with the color of the sky. Sky during spring or summer has to have much brighter color, so I decided to darken it a little bit. And for this I selected blue pencil, which is couple of shades brighter comparing to the background color which I got from my watercolor paints. For me it's pencil from Kohinoor Polycolor landscape set but it depends from what color of the sky you have or probably you were able to create nice bright blue color for the sky with watercolors only. For the leaves I decided to use combination of polychromos pencils. The reason why I decided against using Prisma colors is because I hate uh, dark green pencil. For me it's very unnatural, but in the same time it's the darkest green shade which we have in Prisma color set. And on polychromos we have various beautiful dark green colors. We have cold greens, we have yellow greens and they are rich, nice. And for leaves here first I indicate highlights. I think that day is nice, so the whole picture, the whole scene have to be highlighted by the sunlight. And for the upper layer of the leaves and on, on for the leaves which are on the left side, I put first a little bit of cream color. Again, I use polychromos. Instead of this pencil, you can use Prismacolor Deco Yellow. And then I start with my lightest green color, which I selected for the leaves. It's Earth Green Yellowish. As a mid-tone, I selected Permanent Green Olive. And as a darkest green color, I selected Chrome Oxide Green. You can see that all three pencils, from the lightest to the darkest, they are warm green colors. 
obviously near the base of each of the leaves and especially near all lemons, I will put darker colors. But I also want to indicate that upper and left side of the tree are more highlighted. So for the leaves which are on the upper layer on top of the page, I will combine my lightest color and my mid-tone. And for the leaves which are closer to the ground and on the right, I will be combining more of mid-tone and darkest color. And also I will shade there a little bit using dark sepia to make shadows even more prominent.
Well, I hope that you enjoyed this first part of the color along. If you have any ideas how it's possible to have in the same time daffodils and lemons on the same page, I would like to hear it. Maybe I don't know something about growing lemons. Anyway, I still think that picture is very beautiful, so I hope to see you in the next part where we will proceed to color it.